Okay. Oh, this is nice. Maybe I should have gone on to three, two, <laughs> uh, rather than four, three, but we'll find out. It's all a learning curve, fellas. The ballroom forest, uh, don't want a ballroom blitz. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my sunnies off. <laughs> oh yeah, this is nice. I think this is worth it. <laughs> have, have yourself a nice ballroom blitz in there. Lovely, yeah, ballroom forest apparently. <laughs> Very nice. Oh yeah. Geez, you can stay here all day, couldn't you? Until it starts snowing, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's very nice in there. It's worth the whole trip, I reckon. You wait when you get in there. Oh wow, a fish. Spot colour, yeah. Oh, one spot colour, bugger. It's got a change, oh, he's gone. Bugger. Oh, could have had uh, a fish under my lens then. Ah. Uh, oh, back to Norway. Maybe we we'll see some more. I like this, yeah. yeah. I think I'll have this in a greenhouse one day. <laughs> uh, I have to grow a blue fly trap with four inch traps first though, I reckon fellas. Well, we know the organism can go blue, so. Yeah, so what we want to know is whether the blue is in between the red and the green, or is it blue, is it blue in rapid growth, uh, robustness, then red and then green? Or is it blue, green, red, or blue, red, green? Which order? Where does the blue fit in to the green and the red, which, which is what I'm saying. Now, looking at those drops of banana plants down there, they almost seem in, the, in, in parts of the leaves, if you look closely at the, the cutouts I took, the JPEG cutouts, uh, they look like they're uh, losing their chlorophyll. So, so, is it like red to green and then to blue? And when you get the plants blue, they're going to be the biggest they've ever been. They're going to be the size they were in the dinosaur age. I don't know. Well, in the car, uh, listening to the car radio on the way, way down here, we stick in the st in the old the USB sticks, and we're listening to the Richard Feidler uh, <coughs> on ABC eight nine one or whatever it's called. And of course, they have some woman on there talking about you know uh, detesticulating a, a, a male camel having to go in there after a missing testicle that's gone up inside or something. But in passing, she mentions that 
when camel dung has bacteria in it which are uh, better suited to our own, uh, um, uh, global warming climate sort of thing and if a, a sheep or a, uh, a member of the cattle family drinks at the same water trough as a camel it's likely to catch some of these bugs and do better far less and do better I think I think basically that's what she was tending to suggest uh, their metabolism is a little bit better Thank you. that's all right so uh, let you get on through Thanks. okay you'll love the ballroom forest it's only like two minutes down the track oh it's the highlight I think I haven't seen anything better so Okay. Okay. So basically, what I'm saying is, it alters the metabolism, or well, the actual bugs have better, they're better gut bacteria, basically, in the camel.